Bridge. <laughs> this is weird. I haven't done a vlog in three weeks, I think. Well, technically four because my dad did the last one. Yes, yeah, so I wondered how long it would take you to come and give me a cuddle. You okay? Um, firstly, I apologise for the setting. I did actually film this video three weeks ago um, and then unfortunately couldn't put it out, which I will explain why in this vlog um, and Afi's now not here so I can't go and film it with Afi which is why you're sat in the kitchen with me and Clem and also apologise for the fact that I've got the laptop up it's because I have written notes of what I need to try and say in this vlog so I don't forget anything and get stumbled um which is why I've got this it's just little prompts I've just got like little notes of what we need to say so let's start by basically going back to three weeks ago and I will explain what I was going to explain and going to put out three weeks ago. So before Afi was injured and she went off for a year and all of that, I wanted to send Afi away for schooling livery just to try and get her going a bit nicer, working a bit better um and one thing led to another and i just didn't end up doing it and then obviously she went out of work and since she's been back in work i've been like since like january time i've been kind of thinking oh like, i should really send her away for schooling livery like i wanted to do a year ago and firstly it's really difficult to find somebody that you trust like with your absolute pride and joy um it's really difficult i think to find because people, if they've had good good experiences, they're obviously going to rave about them, but they've usually only had like one encounter with them. If they have a bad experience, they're obviously not going to rave about them. So I found it quite difficult to find someone that was recommended, but also like petite enough to ride Af, because Af obviously is quite a small pony um, and she's quite finely built. And then you think, okay, I'll, like, I'll message them next week and you just never get around to it. And then you end up going to clinics and booking things in and you think, okay, well, she can't go next week because I've got this clinic to do on her. And things just kind of never end up happening basically and then obviously she started this rearing and she started the rearing two three days before i went away i then went to africa and left her for two weeks and two very very competent ladies came and rode her friends of mine and she was still rearing with them and they are like they just kind of ignore her let her get on with it and then like push her forward and she was still not often like she'd maybe go once or twice in a session but was still going up. So I got professionals out to check her physically, to check that she was okay and that there wasn't anything going on, which is why she was rearing, like pain related. And they gave me the all clear. They said that she looked very, very sound and that she felt really good all over, but they couldn't see an obvious reason for why she would be going up. Um, I've only just had her saddle refitted and I've had a bridal and bit lady out. Um, and she's also only just had her teeth done, she gets her teeth done every six months. So we've kind of covered a lot of bases uh, pain for like pain related things. And we do know that Afi has got this cheeky side. She goes up with me a lot on the ground and she's a very clever mare, very, very clever, like almost a bit too clever. Um, and I didn't want her to learn this habit. Like I wanted to nip it in the bud before it almost got dangerous and out of control and I thought well I'm I want to send her away for school delivery anyway why not send her away now get this nipped in the bud by a professional hopefully if the professional can nip it in the bud um find out exactly what's going on and get her going nicely get her schooled so she was due to go um away for schooling for two weeks and the weekend she was going really really well she wasn't being naughty at all she wasn't rearing I think she was being quite sweet from what they were saying and things seemed to be going in the right direction. So, can you hear that? And things seemed to be going in the right direction. So I was due to put out a vlog that weekend. She would have been there for a week and I wanted to, I wanted to let you all know what was going on. It was like, I didn't want it to be a secret that I'd gone, that she'd gone off for schooling livery. Um, I think you're all very aware that I do have a lot of help with Afi. I am very, very fortunate. Um, and I wouldn't be able to do it on my own. I wouldn't be able to do it if I didn't have the help. And I'm not ashamed to say that I asked for help. I think it's a very good thing to do um, and to not put yourself, but also the horse in dangerous situations because you ask for help. 
So I was always going to share that with you and I vlogged like taking her there and her settling in um, and everything like that and why I was taking her and it was all edited ready to go and I don't know why but something in my gut was like just don't post it like I always post a video on a Sunday or a Monday and something in my gut was like just hold off like just don't post this yet wait another week and I don't know why because when I tell you like everything was going so well I'd been sent videos of her she just looked brilliant she was working really nicely going really well and on Tuesday the 2nd of April so she'd been there maybe 10 or 11 days I think nine or ten days she'd been there um, and I had a phone call to say that she was tying up so we rushed over there to see what was going on we obviously called the vet um, she also had a really fat hot back leg um, and all the other legs were obviously hot and they were fat and like they were all tense and she was shaking and she didn't want to touch anywhere on her body we arrived and she was laid down and she didn't want to get up and you could just tell she was very very uncomfortable but this back back leg was causing us a little bit of concern because it was just a lot fatter than all the others um and she had no cuts that you could see no mud fever that you could see but she'd obviously just got a pinprick somewhere in her leg um and got cellulitis just to add to all of our issues um she'd been going out while she was there which was totally my decision i like they did warn me that it was really really muddy and i was like no i, I need her to be out and um, she copes better when she's out let's just put her out um, and unfortunately, yes, she did. I, I don't know, it, it might have been a little bit of mud fever. You, it doesn't look, you can't see anything on her leg. She is just very sensitive. So we then had to have um, quite a frank discussion. And I am not sharing this with you to get sympathy or to get your advice on the matter or anything like that, but just sharing it with you to show that First of all, to show that this is at the front of our minds and that we aren't being naive with the whole issue with Afi and obviously Afi has always been and will always be our main priority and will always be put first. Um, but also to show you that sometimes this is what happens with horses, like sometimes you, you can't fix them all no matter how hard you try. So we had the discussion of possibly um, putting her to sleep and for some that might be a huge shock for others that have maybe been around horses for quite a while might um understand a little bit more she has just had issue after issue and she is seven years old and yes okay all the issues seem to be quite mild and yes okay after a year we did find very very mild things going on but it did take us a year to find it and that wasn't from like lack of trying the amount of times she's been in and out of hospital, the amount of x-rays she has had, the amount of like lameness workups she has had is not through lack of trying. And you just kind of think, when does it turn into from good money to bad money or throwing at her? And she, like, when does it turn into like lack of quality of life for her? Like if she, mentally she needs to be in work we have tried to give her time off uh, last summer when i was at my friend's yard she was living out 24 7 with two other friends like two ponies that she adored neither of them went anywhere the only person that ever moved was affy like she would come up to the yard to be groomed and like go back down none of the other horses would ever leave her side and it was the most chilled out environment ever like it was so so lovely there it was only me and my friend that would go into the yard like, it's a private yard yet she still managed to get herself into mischief, still managed to cut all of her legs and give herself cellulitis, still managed to pull her shoes off by getting them trapped on fencing and just causing us lots of issues. She's not the sort of horse that you can retire, like mentally she has to be worked, but physically, is it too much for her body? It's kind of the discussion that we were having. And it was really difficult because for a few days, it was, kind of back and forth having this discussion and I would make a decision and then I'd go back on it and then I'd make a different decision and I'd go back on it and I just could not make my mind up. I did not know what was right or what was wrong basically. And I've just said it previously, but I'll say it again, like Afi will always be my main priority. And 
if one day that means that I have to say goodbye a lot sooner than anticipated, then that is, as an owner, a decision that I have got to make. I've got to be a responsible owner and one day possibly make that decision. However, the only good thing from having to see my vet and my vet physio and my farrier and all these professionals all of the time <laughs> is that they know Afi and they know me very, very well. They know everything Afi's been through and everything that we have done with her. And we have collectively made the decision that actually physically we have got her body very good. We obviously found the arthritis and found the navicular and we are treating that as best we can and we are being very sensible with that. She has physio every two weeks and we've got her to a point where she is very sound. And now our issues are like the PSSM. So for anyone that doesn't know, Afi has PSSM2, so she has the P3 variant and the PX variant. So the PX is like her brain. Thanks, Clem. So the PX is like their brain. Me and my friend will say that her brain's like just not quite wired properly. Like she's got a loose connection every now and again. You have to like shake her head. Obviously, we don't actually shake her head. Um, just to like reconnect the wire. It's obviously a lot more scientific than that. Like that is not a way to describe it, but that is how we think of it. And then the P3 is like their muscles. And it's usually PSSM1 horses, but can also be PSSM2 horses that tie up and any horse can tie up for various different reasons for being overfed sugar for being overworked for just no reason at all like any horse can tie up but PSSM horses are more likely to tie up than others and for not major reasons so for just treating them like a normal day-to-day -day horse can cause them to tie up which is kind of what happened in Afi's case it wasn't anyone's fault it wasn't the schooling livery's fault it wasn't our fault it's just unfortunately one of those things so we put her on 40 paracetamol a day and the reason that she was prescribed paracetamol rather than butte is something to do with protecting their liver when they're tying up so you don't want to feed them butte you want to feed them paracetamol don't just feed them paracetamol check with your vet first um and she was also on muscle relaxants obviously because of the tying up and then on antibiotics for the cellulitis. She's now off the antibiotics and off the paracetamol, but still on the muscle relaxants. Um, and she was on those muscle relaxants, I can't actually tell you for how long for, because I obviously don't have the box with me because it's with her on schooling livery. So um, we've decided to keep her on those and she has been brought back into work. So she was brought back into work seven days after the tying up episode and touch, touch all the wood guys she seems to be going really well so we now need to pray that she doesn't tie up while she's on the muscle relaxants because if she does we're kind of buggered and we've kind of got nowhere else to go if she doesn't tie up praying to god then she will come back home in two weeks time now the reason that i decided to leave her at uh schooling livery was because the first couple of days she was far too poorly to move um there's no way it was fair on her to travel and then she had to go on box rest but needed to be like walked and those of you that know Afi know that she isn't the easiest to hand walk especially when she's on box rest um and the yard that I'm at is a DIY yard so none of the other horses would be in whereas at the schooling livery most of them stay in or they go out for a couple of hours in the morning and then they stay in so she would always have someone around her so she'd be a lot happier staying in there but they've also got a horse walker so they can just pop her on that and it's controlled exercise without anyone getting harmed um and she just seems a lot happier there so that's why I decided to leave her there for the week and then obviously I wanted her to have two weeks of schooling so that's why I've then left her for another two weeks so she'd have been there a month RIP my bank account so hopefully, pray to God that we can keep her from tying up. And if we can, then we basically need to look more into the management of the PSSM. After has had PSSM all her life, yet only in the last maybe 18 months has it really became an issue for us. Um, 
and have I really noticed a change in her. So my management and my diet for her obviously isn't suiting her. It's obviously not right because she'd been doing fairly well up until 18 months ago. So I don't want to go too much into detail about PSSM. Um, it's trial and error for every horse. And I also don't really know like that much about it. I, I am on the start of my journey about it all. And there are a lot more knowledgeable people out there that know a lot more than I do. So I don't want to go into too much detail, but I basically want to change everything that I do with us. So first of all, it's management. Like management is a really big thing for PSM horses. So most PSM horses like to be in a strict routine. They like to know exactly what's happening before it's happened, basically. And they don't like change, especially PSM horses with the PX variant, which is what Afi's got, because that's like the brain. The brain just doesn't really, it doesn't like change. It doesn't, it doesn't do well with change. And the livery yard that I am at, was at, is a like DIY assisted. So everyone goes up and does their own horses at their own times and they all come in and go out at different times and nothing is regimented up there, nothing is a routine. And it worked really well for Afi while I was there, but I think the more I look into it, the more actually she's not 100% suited there. So I am taking her to a full livery yard where they turn them all out at the same time, they bring them all in at the same time, one person does them all, and they're on a strict routine, which I think will really, really help Af to kind of anticipate what's gonna happen and know what's gonna happen and not have to like throw herself around because she wants to go out because everyone else has gone out and she's only her and her friend are left in or throw herself around when she's out in the field in the morning because no one else is out yet and she's the only one out in the field because it'll all be a strict routine. Everyone goes out together, which I think will be a massive help. I am slightly apprehensive about moving her, but I'll go into that in a different video. Um, and at the new yard, we have got an indoor school. So Pearson horses also don't like to get cold and they don't like the rain. So any like massive change in weather, like kind of really upsets them and really throws them off, makes their muscles really, really tight and sore. So having the indoor is gonna be amazing in the winter to still be able to exercise her, but not have to make her get wet. And exercising pierces some horses, but also arthritic horses is a huge deal. Like you need to exercise them. So that is gonna be a game changer, I think. Um, and also grazing. So grazing at the current yard, I'm at the DIY yard, isn't, amazing which is actually really sad because the yard is perfect and like if i could pick up my yard owner and force her to come with me i actually would because she is just incredible like she has been amazing for me and after she took after her first show like she is just amazing for support um but unfortunately the grazing just isn't amazing there and it's nothing that she can do anything about um obviously she can't change the soil and she does everything that she can so she like reseeds it when it needs seeding she rolls it she harrows it like she really maintains it as best she can and we have like winter paddocks and summer paddocks um so they can get rested and stuff and she does do everything that she possibly can but unfortunately the ground just isn't great in the winter and uh winter paddocks are like hard standing with a strip of grazing behind which in theory works really really well but for Afi, um, obviously PSM horse, she's just stood on the hard standing with no shelter, getting cold and wet. There's no grass out there and they're all just stood there. Um, and I almost think that she would be better to be in, like to have been out for an hour or so and then be in because they're out. Obviously it's a DIY yard, so we all work. So they go out anytime between like six and half seven in the morning and they're not back in till like, between half four and half six-ish. Um, so it's a lot of time for them to be out there. And the new yard that I'm moving to has again got summer and winter paddocks, but the winter paddocks are bigger paddocks. So she'll still be in a herd. So she'll be in a herd summer and winter, which I think she will love because she loves having friends. And um, and at the yard, that and her old yard, because they were on like hard standing, they couldn't, and it's quite a small patch, they couldn't be in with friends, they're all individual. Um, and then in the summer she goes out with a herd. So I think having a herd in the winter will also really help. And they also just go out for a couple of hours in the morning and then they all come in 
And they've got a horse walker there, so I can chuck on the walker if I need to in the afternoon and the evenings. But because they all come in, they're all happy to be in. It's an indoor barn, it's nice and warm. And I think overall it should just really, really help um, Afi and the PSSM side of things. And then the next thing I've kind of really done some research on is the diet. So we've had like bloods run and things to check that she's getting everything that she should. But the more research that I've done into it, the more that people say, actually, you most PSSM horses need um, like an added protein supplement and an added vitamin E supplement. And some even need an added magnesium supplement. So we're going to trial and error with all of that. So I've just dropped off some protein at schooling livery. So they are going to add that in slowly over kind of like a week period, 10 days period, and see whether that makes a difference. And then we will then add in the vitamin E and see if that makes a difference. And then obviously so on and so on. I think in general, her feed is quite good. I've always been quite careful with her feed. So she is on Thunderbrook's chaff, which is like low sugar um, and kind of like no, no added nonsense added to it. Um, Speedy Beat, which is supposed to be quite good for um, all three horses. And then she's just on her Prem Performance Supplements, which I absolutely rave about. The Karma is definitely my favourite supplement out of all of them. Um, so she's on a scoop of Karma a day, which just takes the edge off her. It's so good. Um, she's on a scoop of the Gastro Premier because obviously she um, has had ulcers a few times in the last year. So just to try and keep them at bay. And then also on the uh, Premier Flex, I think the new um, version is called which obviously because she's a bit arthritic it just helps all of her muscles and helps her bones and everything and just helps her feel a little bit more supple and a bit nicer and then she's also on Himalayan salt because most PSM horses need added salt to their diet too. Also quickly just want to add in while I talk about the performance um, supplements that you can use discount team PP20 I believe for 20% off hello darling your supplements honestly a game changer. I use the Karma cookies when I go out and about. I religiously keep it on the Karma. Well, I've already told you all the supplements that I have her on, but absolute game changer. And if you DM them, they will basically answer any questions that you have and kind of advise you what supplements they think that your horse needs to be put on because there are a lot on the website, um, which is fantastic because it means there is something for every horse there. Little disclaimer that I am very lucky to be supported by Prem Performance. However, even before I was supported, I have always bought their products because I just think that they are fabulous. Do you think they're fabulous? They do you cookies, don't they? They do puppy cookies keep you calm but you're already calm you're calm enough um and i'm also going to be basically keeping a diary of what the weather's like how much turnout she's had what work she's had um how she's been in herself how her muscles feel like are they wobbly are they rock solid over on her quarters if she's had any treats or any tick bits at all and just keep a diary and try and see what her triggers are um so quite a few psm horses the more research i've been doing is they'll say that the grass is fine for them um unless it's raining and then the next day when they go out if it's sunny that's when the grass then affects them and sends them a little bit loopy and makes their muscles quite sore and just quite tense all over um, so I think things like that would be really interesting to kind of see and obviously the treats I try and feed her like low sugar treats anyway not that I particularly feed treats um, but if I ever do I try and feed her low sugar treats I'm not giving her any like carrots or bananas or anything like that and I'm just going to slowly introduce things again like carrots and like treats and just see whether I can find her triggers and see whether I can kind of preempt when we're going to have a flare up. I can't control the weather and, and things like that. And so I won't always be able to prevent it, but maybe I can help it. So if we know that she reacts worse to the grass after it's been raining, then maybe we put her on a smaller patch that day, or maybe we put her on the hard standing with some hay that day and put her up the next day. Maybe we put a muzzle on her that day. Like we can just, I can try and help as much as I can. Um, if I know her triggers and I know what's gonna like get, make her a little bit more uncomfortable basically. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed that little update. Um, I feel like it will have came to a shock to a lot of you, but also not. 
Um, I've had so many messages on Instagram, like, when are we gonna get a new YouTube update? Like, where is Affie? Why have we not been posting that? And that is why, because she's been at schooling livery. I don't wanna lie to you and be posting old footage, but equally wanted to update you when I had something to update you with. Like, imagine if I'd updated you on the weekend, being like, yeah, like she's amazing. Everything's going well, she's at schooling livery. And then two days later, she tied up and I'd then have to come back and be like, actually guys, I drink it and she's not well and she's tied up and she's got cellulitis and it's not going well and we're, we're not sure whether she's gonna like make it through and that sounds really like, it, tying up isn't the be all the end all, like it's not that she wouldn't make it through from the tying up, I mean like we weren't sure whether it was fair on her to kind of push her when she's having all these issues. But actually we've decided that we are gonna try and change her diet and her management. Okay bye. Yeah. And as always, thank you so, so much for all the support. I want to try and keep you as involved in this journey as I possibly can, which is why I'm being so honest with you about all of our thoughts and our feelings and what's going on. And hopefully you can respect all of that. I'm sure that you can. Um, and yeah, and let's just hope and pray that everything goes well and that we are finally heading in the right direction. Um, my next vlog will be moving out of my old yard and into my new yard and I'll show you around my new yard a little bit. It is lovely, really, really nice, like very luxury. Um, but I have a lot of stuff. So moving it all out, I've already done it, I've already moved it out and it, it wasn't a fun experience, I'm not gonna lie guys, I did not enjoy it. I put it all in my trailer and then just dumped my trailer at my new yard because I was like, I just can't face unloading this right now. However, I have mainly unloaded it apart from all my rugs and my coats. I've got a rug and coat obsession, as you all know. But that is later hands problem, maybe next weekend hands problem. I've got a week and a half till Afi comes back. Uh, I went and saw her yesterday. She's back in work. She's doing really, really well. She looks really well. She was absolutely golden. She's obviously been on box rest for... Uh, a week and done no exercise at all and they just came out and got on her and she did not put a foot wrong which is absolutely brilliant um, and I'm hoping to get on her this weekend with their kind of professional help on the ground which I think will be amazing and then I'm hoping to carry on going for regular lessons there because it's not that far maybe half an hour from me um, now that they know Afi and me quite well but yeah let's just hope and pray that this is the end but I'm going to leave it here and I will see you next week. Thanks for watching if you've got this far. <laughs> Sorry that it's just me blabbing on, but I just needed to update you all. Um, and I hope you understand now why A, I couldn't post that video last week, two weeks ago. And B, why I'm here. Because obviously I can't go make a video with her at school in livery. Because I think they'd probably be like, and what are you doing? <laughs> why have you got a camera facing you? yeah it is time to move on move on to a new yard and just pray that this is a step in the right direction thank you so much for watching please subscribe comment and like i'm going to try and reply to all of the comments that come in i have actually really missed chatting to you guys because obviously i haven't really like been on social media at all i haven't really been on my, on my instagram i haven't been on youtube at all um, so it's been weird. I've missed you guys. Yeah, see you next week. Bye.